Welcome everybody to session six of eight. It's hard to believe we're already at six, session six of this eight part series. And today's session for the Alma Analytics Masterclass is filters and functions in Alma Analytics. <clears throat> Before we jump right into the filters and functions, you'll see my colleague Melanie sent out some links and I just wanna review some of those. Uh, everything we're going to be discussing today is here on this page. You'll see there is two links. There's one called Advanced Material Filters and one called Advanced Material Functions. We're going to be going through the material about those filters and functions via those chats. I send out now the main page, and on that main page, you'll see the links to the filters and functions. I think I didn't send that to everybody. I think I sent that to one person. In any case, I'm sending out now the filters and the functions, the links directly there. And you've got that now in the chat. Uh, also, all of the information is on the official page of the Analytics Masterclass, uh, which is right here. Melanie sent this out as well. From here, for example, you can access the recordings and also sign up for future sessions. Let's just look at where we are now in the large picture, because we're on session six of eight, which means we've already gone through more than half of the session. And we had session one, which was a general overview. Then we started looking at specific subject areas we started with physical inventory and fulfillment then we looked at electronic inventory and usage and acquisitions then we started getting into specific uh topics of alma analytics session four we did dashboards session five we did prompts now we're doing filters and functions so now we're really at a stage where we just keep getting deeper and deeper into the analytics Next week, we're going to talk about the analytics objects, which are the widgets, the dashboards, the scheduled reports, uh, the reports that can be consumed by someone from within inside Alma. And then we're going to finish off with several useful tips that we really couldn't categorize into one specific topic. So we just put them all in useful tips, things that have come up over the years that people ask quite frequently. Uh, so by the end of these eight sessions, uh, I think people really will be at a, at a high level of using Alma Analytics. Um, one other thing is all of these sessions and not just these an Alma Analytics sessions, but all of our training material, you can also find on YouTube. On uh, Sorry about this, trying to get my browser there. Uh, on YouTube the ex libris channel is this url here or you can just come into youtube and search for ex libris limited uh there's several ex libris out there on youtube but you'll see our icon there and you'll know it's us but uh if you just search for ex libris limited or ex libris without the limited there we are the first one so once you're in ex libris or I should say, once you're in the channel, you've got to search here. And for example, if I was to say here, Analytics Master Class and enter, you'll get right into the Analytics Master Class. Here's one of eight, here's two of eight, here's three of eight. There's a playlist which includes them all, four of eight, five of eight, uh, and six of eight. Today's session will be up there shortly. Okay, so that's it for our preliminary administrative information. And now let's jump right in and uh, start with our session. So filters and functions. We're gonna start with the filters. And again, I'm in a regular standard version. I'm not in some future development version. If I go here to the help and I look down, I'm in a standard December release, uh, just like everybody else. Um, 
soon it's going to excuse me and november release first sunday of december we'll get the december release standard november release and let's jump into analytics and we're going to start let's go to these filters we're going to start with filtering by a specific part of a control field and the presentation which deals with that right here is how to filter by contents of a specific position of a control field in alma so for example if we're talking about a bibliographic record we have for example the ldr and the 008 which are control fields where every position means something uh and if i take a record here in alma i'll go to any record here in alma and we'll do a simple search parts of the ldr and parts of the 008 we have already broken down in alma analytics so there's no need to go look for a certain position but we didn't do every position of the 008 in ldr but if I look at a record, I'm just randomly going to take this. Some, I looked on purpose for poetry. You'll see why shortly. But I'm opening any record that has poetry, any record at all um, in Alma, and going to the metadata editor. And I'm just going to open up the LDR and or the 008 so we can see something here. Because what we're going to want to do now in analytics is look for a certain position i'm on the 008 right now and we're going to want to use alma analytics to search for a specific part of one of these fields let me just flip my light over of either the 008 or the ldr uh and let's look for example for something in the 008 uh position 34. so position 34 Oh, that's an undefined position 30 we can look for position 30 literary text for sound recordings position 34 is an undefined position 33 let's look for for example for position 33. now i said some of these fields if we go to the ldr as well some of these fields are already in separate fields in alma analytics so there's no need for us to start looking for certain positions. If we go to analytics, bibliographic details, uh, and we say, for example, 008, just so we get that specific part, first result, all of our knowledge center, by the way, is very well indexed in Google. We make sure of that. So if I say, for example, 008 here, uh, so the publication date we already take from the 008 position 7 to 10. There's no need to filter by position 7 to 10. The place code we take from the 008 position 15 to 17. The begin publication date we take from here. Uh, here's another one, the 007 field. We take position 0 for the category of the material. We take the bibliographic level from position 7 of the LDR. So we already have many situations where we take a section but not all of them and one of those is position 33 of the 008 so let's see how we can do that so we're in alma analytics here and let's open any subject area because almost all subject areas have the bibliographic details uh, the benchmark and the usage data don't have the, in the user subject area, doesn't have the bibliographic details folder. I believe all of the others do, may, maybe not all. It's always dangerous to say all. But the vast majority of the subject areas have the bibliographic details. And I'm going to go into the title subject area to do this. And again, we're going to be looking at the 008. Let's go see the 008 here, just so we get ourselves into context. Library of Congress site. And control fields. And 008. And here we are. So, uh, this is what we're going to be looking for. The literary forum in position 33 for books. 
Let's do that. So here we are. So let's put out some fields here so we'll be able to identify what we're looking for. Uh, in the bibliographic details folder, let's get, for example, the MMS ID. And let's get the title. So here's the MMS ID and the title. QRST, we'll get the regular title. And let's get the 008. So I'm just going to search for it instead. Uh, a couple of releases ago, maybe it's already over a year ago, we made sure to have the full version of the LDR and the 008 in here. And I'm going to get everything which includes, includes any, contains any, O-E-T-R-Y, just so I don't get the entire repository. And we'll see the 008s, and then we'll get the, the specific position. So here's all the 008s, and let's say we want now the literary form. We want position 33 of the 008. Now, when Mark, machine readable cataloging Mark, when Mark says position 33, where I've selected here, for us it's position 34 because Mark starts counting at position zero and we start counting at position one. So we always have to go one, when we filter inside a, a function, we're gonna use a function now, um, we need to always add one. If we want the Mark position 33, we actually need position 34 because the Mark starts at zero and we start at one. Let's take a look. So here we are. I'm going to go back to the criteria tab. And let's take this mark 008. Now we're in the heart, the meat of what we're doing here to get a specific one or more positions of a control field. We'll go to the edit formula. And I'm going to click this insert function on the bottom left, insert function. And now we're looking for part of the string. The string is the a continuation of characters. So we're going to go to this string. And now there's various ways we can get parts of the string. For example, I can say that I want left and say I want the, the, the four left characters. Or I can say right and take, say I want the, the three last characters on the right. Um, but I'm going to say, give me a substring. By the way, I could do what I'm doing now in many ways. So if you know another way and you do it and it works, it doesn't mean a different way is wrong. Uh, what I'm showing in, in all of the cases where there are multiples, I try to show that the easiest to explain way. So we're going to take a substring. And it explains here what it is. It's substring and then the field. And then it says from whatever position for however long. So I'm going to choose that one. So now I have substring of the bibliographic details. So I'm going to want position 34 because we said in Mark it's called position 33. In Mark it starts as zero. So I'm going to say I want position 34. And I want it only once. I want from position 34 and I want to count one position because I only want one position. If I was looking for three, three from for, for 33, 34, and 35, then I would say for a length of three. But I want a length of one. And I'll call this um, 008 position 33 which is, let's go back here, which is called the literary form. And here we go. So now I've got it. I recalled it something here at the column heading. After I checked custom headings, I put in the substring formula. And let's go take a look. Now, by the way, 
this is relevant that position is relevant when it's a book because if you notice here uh for different materials it's different for example for a continuing resource here which is typically a journal position 33 is something else and if it was music, position 33 would be the transportation and arrangement. So we want only books. So we've got that as well. So let's also filter our report by books. That's not directly related to our topic of, filter, of uh, getting a position of a control field, but so we, we have a correct subset here. Let's get that. So under bibliographic details, uh there's format and there's also type uh one of them is the mark type one of them this is the one we want the material type um let's there we go books so let's just filter by only books and material type filter is equal to books okay and I'm going to save this as well. I'm going to take this out. We don't need it. And save as. Just so I've got my record here. And I'll put this under Alma University, which is my, my demo institution. And I'll call this uh, Position 33 Literary Form for Books. Okay, now let's see what we got. And then we'll be able to go into Alma and see if it's correct. So a lot of these are zero. Um, and let's make sure we're correct. Maybe we miscalculated. Maybe I needed to do 32 instead of 34. So let's just take anything random. Uh, Shakespeare for students. It says it's got one of these. You know what? I'm going to do descending here. I'm going to change this to sort descending so I get, oh, this one's got a pipe. And I see many of them have a pipe. This one's got a U, this one's got a P. P is really correct because P means poetry. But let's take this one here and see if it really is a P. So I'll come into Alma and I will search for that. What I also should have done is filtered by, is in repository because I might be getting deleted records. but. We'll worry about that later. Well, not worry about it. We'll deal with it later if it happens. Um, so let's take a look here. I just opened up this one, which says it's a P according to analytics. Here's my 008. I'll do control F to open it in a form. And I see the literary form right here really is P, just like analytics states. Let's take that example of the U. Pre-romantic poetry has a U. Let's go take a look here. Pre-romantic poetry. And here's our 008, control F. Literary form is a U, unknown. So I'm able to display one specific position of a control field. And I can not only display it, I could filter on that. I could come back here and say, I want to filter this only by uh, those which are P, which is poetry. P, okay, results. One of the useful uh, aspects of this, by the way, is many times a normalization rule will be written with a condition uh, of what happens according to a specific position of a control field. So it's possible even to skip that condition part of the normalization rule and simply build a set based on a report like this. So now we have those that only have P. Before I stop for questions, let's just do an example also if we want to get a whole string. Instead of getting um, one position, we want several positions. So for example, let's look at the 008. Uh, maybe I want, for example, we'll take one that's longer, uh, language. We already have language. 
Uh, let's take the date entered on the file. Or let's see if we got something in the LDR, something longer in the LDR. Uh, the base address of data. Okay, let's take position 12 to 16 of the LDR. And if it says here 12 to 16, we need 13 to 17. Because again, this is starting with zero, as we see here. And we start with one. When we do the substring, we start with one. So let's add here the leader. And let's filter it for that specific position, 12 to 16. It's called the base address of the data. Let's take that with us. And we're going to want 13 to 17. So we're going to edit formula, just like we did before. The function on the bottom left, string, and we're going to look now for a substring. Substring, and we'll say now we want from position, I forgot already, position uh, 13. So we'll say from position 13, and we want 12 to 16, so that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, that's five positions. Four, five. And we can call this um, LDR 12 to 16, um, and what was it called there? That's not literary form. It's the base address of the data. So now we should be getting that 12 to 16. Let's go take a look. And let's take a random one here. We'll take Appalachian Elegy Poetry and Palace. It says here 0061. Let's go see. I'll take this with me. And we'll see if it's uh, 00661. Here it is. And we'll go into the LDR. And here it is, 00661. OK, I'm going to stop for questions. We saw that we can, just as a quick summary, we saw that we can get one position, specific position of a control field and display it. We can get a section, more than one position, of a control field and display it, and we can also filter by it. Let me go take a look at the chat. Uh, any questions or comments from anybody? Melanie, did you see any questions come in? OK, nobody has any questions. Melanie, you don't see any questions either? No, okay, no some, oh, okay, I see one came in right now. Is it pos possible to do that with Unimark fields? Yes, it's possible to do this with any field. In fact, let's do a Unimark field. I'm going to go into my physical titles because I've got every kind of mark you can imagine here. Uh, I'm going to go into the advanced and I'm going to go into, is that format or type? I always get confused. Record for, Record format. So I'm going to look for Unimark, Unimark, and I'll get anything with Unimark. Uh, let's take this one here. I'm not going to pronounce the French. My French isn't very good. Um, but let's go take a look here and see what we want. So I'm going to edit the record. This is a Unimark record we're going into now. While that's opening, someone comments about the base address of the data he's uh, he or she asks is it used for anything practical or just an example it's just an example i was just looking for any sec section that i could um, get a substring of okay a uh, person who asked this question i'm in a unimark record uh, i can take now for example the 005 field and do something on it by the way i can take positions of any field it doesn't have to be a um, a control field. In person who asked a question, if you want to suggest a specific field, 
go ahead, send it in the chat, a specific field, and I can do it on a specific field. Uh, here's my 005, for example, which includes the date. Uh, so this would be, looks to me like March 11th, 2021. So if I wanted everything with a 005, every Unimark record with a 005 of position one to four of a certain year, I could do that now. I don't see a person who asked a question that you're suggesting a field, so I'll use the 005. Again, you can suggest a field, and I'll use that. Um, so let's take that 005 on a Unimark record. We'll go back into analytics. Let's make a brand new one here. We'll say create analysis. And again, we'll go into the titles. But again, this can be anywhere, anyone that has the bibliographic details. And you can do this on any field. You can do it on a, a, a patron primary identifier, for example. So first of all, let's go here to type. And now I'm going to get, uh, or let's go actually to format. And we'll say record format filter is Unimark. And then we'll say we want field zero. Oh, we can only do it on fields that, that are in, in um, the bibliographic details folder, of course. So let's take a different field. Let's take even the title. It can be any field. So let's say we want here the 200 field title. And let's display the title twice so we can see the original and then see the positions. And I'll say I want position one to five. Here I am going to do life cycle because I have many Unimarks I know are deleted here. So let me say filter is in repository. And let's say here, just so we have an example, I see the person still didn't send in a suggested field, so I'm doing my own. Uh, and let's say for whatever reason, I want to go to the function and the string and substring. And I'll say, I want from position one, four, five. I want the first five positions of the title. I could have also used the left function on this. And let's go see the results. So now we'll see the whole title, and then we'll see the first five positions. So uh, 100 ants to management, 100A, OK? A-L-A -A blank. Here we are, A-L-A -A blank. Uh, a F F I C A F F I C. So we have a substring of the title. It's a Unimark record. Okay, I think we should move on now, simply because we're already a half hour into the session. Uh, let's say now, I'll keep this report here, that we want to do a filter for a string which might be capital and might be lowercase. We touched upon this. When we did um, the session on prompts, and we did a prompt which would work for uppercase and lowercase, so now we're going to do a hard-coded filter which will work for uppercase and lowercase. So let me get anything with LC classifications, uh, classification code, HQ. And let's say now, for example, if I'm looking for a word from the title or a word from the subject, uh, sometimes it'll start with a capital and sometimes it won't. Uh, let's say here, for example, um, I'm going to sort this descending. Oh, okay. So let's say. Youth. Youth may exist here capital and may exist not capital. If I come into the criteria tab now and I were to say title, filter, contains any, youth.
So now it's bringing me ones with a lowercase youth. For example, the first one has lowercase youth. The second one has uppercase and lowercase. The fourth one has only lowercase. So if I was searching by uppercase, I wouldn't get this one. And I wouldn't get this one. Now, one option, which is which would work, but not be so aesthetically pleasing, we'll say, would be I can also say again, filter contains any and a capital youth and change this to or. I'm going to click the and. So now it's looking for lowercase or uppercase. Now I'll get them both. However, excuse, so now I have lower and upper. By the way, we could also do that by searching for youth space, and then we wouldn't get youth scapes. Uh, but anyway, um, but a nicer way to do it instead of the or is to take the whole title or whatever word I'm searching for, take the whole title and put it lowercase, and then search for the lowercase. Let's see what we mean. I'm going to display the title one more time. Because we're going to have one title display, and then we're going to have a manipulated title, which we'll use for the filtering. So I'm putting in the title again. And now I'll say filter, or excuse me, edit formula. And again, we're going to do a function. And we're going to put the whole thing lowercase. So function, and now we can either just change it to upper or we can change it to lower. Uh, here's the upper. Again, I went to string just like last time, and we have lower and upper. I'll do lower. So that's all I have to do. Now it's the lowercase version. So let's just display it for a moment, even though eventually we'll take it out of the display. So now you can see on the right, this one here, it's always in lowercase. It, it changed everything to lowercase. This one here is called, on the left, Youth Media and Culture in the Asia Pacific Region. It took the word youth and it just made it lowercase. So now I can filter on that. I'll go back to the criteria tab. And I can filter on the lowercase and say filter contains any youth, Y-O-U-T-H. And now it'll give me anything that has youth capital or not capital. For example, the first one has a lowercase youth. The third one has an uppercase youth. <coughs> um, so now I can leave the filter, but not display the title here. So let's see what we mean. Um, lower title. We'll get rid of the display of the lower title. So here I'll delete it from here. And I'll leave it here. So it's still in the filter. Let me get rid of this one. We don't need this one anymore. So I still have it in the filter, but I'm not displaying it. I'm filtering here by the lower bibliographic details contains lowercase youth over to the results. And again, I've still got my good results with lowercase youth, uppercase youth, because I'm filtering on the lowercase version for lowercase youth. Are there questions or comments on that one? I see a, I see a question about what we did before, and I'm going to get to that as well. Okay, I see someone asks, let me put this out into words so we, because I know when I read it, you might not hear me, I mean, uh, follow. So I'll just put it here so we can all read. Um, blank document okay so somebody asks curious about the and or combination in the previous example 
Um, in some situation, there is a need for parentheses, etc., to avoid ambiguity in the Boolean logic. Yes, my example was at the end there, but yeah, it can it can cause a mess. Um, it's best when you're using the OR to convert it to SQL and use parentheses. I wish we had time to discuss every possible topic. <laughs> Eight sessions of an hour and a half each is not enough. I'm going to leave this in the Word document. Maybe we can come back to it. But I do want to cover this one, which someone else asked. Someone says, is it possible to make a filter for divided positions? For example, position 1 and 3 and 8 and 10 in a title, or position 1, 7, and 9, so not a substring, but selected freestanding positions. Absolutely, it is. Um, in order to understand that, let's talk for a moment about something called concatenation. Concatenation takes different fields or different parts of a field and puts them together, concatenate. So, for example, let's take youth responding to lives. And let's say I want positions, or maybe I'll do it on the 008 because it's something a little more logical. We'll try to keep it somewhat logical. Let's say I want, uh, let's put this out here. So let's say I want the language, I want the year and the language in one field. Similar to what you're stating, I want, I'm not using your exact positions, but I want the position that has the year, which I believe is 7 to 10, and I want the position which has the language, which I believe is 35 to 37. Um, let's go take a look. I'm going to put out twice. So now I've got the 008 twice. Here, filter, uh, excuse me, edit formula, function, String. So if I want 7 to 10, I'll say substring. And from position 8 for 4. Because again, position 7, we're actually saying 8. <coughs> and then here, edit formula. Oh, not classification code. Here. Here I want function. Position 35 to 37 is actually position 36 for three characters. So again, we'll say substring position 36 for three characters. I'll concatenate them in a moment. So now I want to put these, according to your statement, I want to put these together. First, I want the, the year, and then I want the language. So there's something called concatenate. Let's make a brand new field, and I'll concatenate those together. And by the way, here, where's my doc, my set of documents here? Here we go. So we've got something here. You can look it up on your own afterwards. How to con oh, that's a different one. Different. How to concatenate two or more fields. Now we're concatenating two parts of one field, but it's the same principle. Uh, so let's go back to that. So now in this new 008 here, I'll say edit formula. Now, everything that I already added here, I have in the columns. I'm going to get rid of what's there. It's blank now. So first, I'll take this one, mark from position 8. And then this double pipe on the bottom right, it says concatenate. I'll choose that. Then I'll choose the other one. So now I've got both of them together. Both of them, first I got that one, the pipe, and then that one. So let's go see what's going to happen now. Here they are. So now I have all in one together. And I can even put in the middle there a space, or I can put a dash. Let's do that, and then we'll go on. 
Back to the criteria tab. I don't even need to display these anymore. And I'll call this edit formula. I'll call this year and lang from 008. And now here, I can put in apostrophes anything I want to display. So I did space dash space, a double pipe again. And now they'll be separated by a, by a space dash space. There it is, year and lang from 008. So I took position 7 to 10, position 35 to 37, displayed them together with a dash in the middle. So that, I think, directly answers this question. The answer is yes, and we saw how to do it right now. Does that answer your question? Okay, I don't see her. Okay, she sa he or she says yes. Okay, let's move on. Um, back to our itinerary. The itinerary is here, and we're going to go back to the filters and functions. Boom. Okay. Um, let's go to a regular expression. How to use a regular expression to retrieve analytics fields by alpha and numeric characters and combinations. This came up several times. There are institutions who have um, certain guidelines of how their primary identifiers of the patrons are made. And if it starts with a certain five characters or the, it ends with a certain uh, numerical characters, then that means something. Uh, at least one institution does the same thing, by the way, for their fund codes. All different parts of the fund codes mean different things, so they want to be able to filter those fund codes by if position whatever is certain letters, etc. So let's take a look at this document, and let's do it. So I'm in Alma, and what we have here, these are regular expressions. Uh, we're not going to talk about the structure of what is a regular expression. The goal is you can use this regular expression and just change it around however you want. A, a class in what is a regular expression uh, is beyond the scope of what we're doing now, but we have examples of regular expressions that it, someone can take and change around as desired. So let's make a example in the user subject area. So let's say create analysis. And let's go to the users. And let's get the primary identifier. And let's get actually first name. This is a little trick, by the way. If you want first name and last name, just search for ST space name. So let's do first name, last name. Now we also want the primary identifier. I'm going to put that in twice. You'll see why in a moment. And I want those who aren't deleted. So let me get um, the user details and status it might be, or um, okay. Active. Or let's say we want anybody who's not deleted. is not equal to, is not in deleted. Okay. Now, let's just put in one of the examples and see how it works. So this says, we'll return a one if the string is all numbers and a zero if there is at least one alphabetical character. Let me make this larger. I, I said I wouldn't be discussing the structure of a regular expression, but let's just make a small little thing here. What this is, is it's saying, but again, you don't even need to know this. It's saying if from the beginning, that means the beginning, 
to the end, a dollar is the end. If there's anything between a zero and a nine, then give me a one. That's, it's a little more complicated than that, but that's the basics. Uh, so we're going to take this, I already have it in my mouse. And for this primary identifier, I'll put that here. And you see it's using the primary identifier. So let's go take a look at what it's doing. I don't need to display the status. Okay. Okay, these all have one. And you can see they all have numbers. Uh, here we have a zero. And it has num it doesn't have all numbers. Here we have also zeros. And they don't have all numbers. Same thing here. So that means if I want now to get only those patrons whose primary identifier is only numbers, I can filter this by is equal to one. And now all of my primary identifiers will have only numbers. That's a very basic way. Then we've got an example here. Uh, all, all characters, all alphabetic characters. So instead of saying zero to nine, let's not even copy paste. We'll change it in here. And I'll make this larger. So instead of saying zero to nine, if I say A to Z, I'm saying all lowercase now. So this is going to give me only primary identifiers. I don't even know if I have any in here that are lowercase, because I'm still searching equals one, all lowercase uh, alpha, uh, excuse me, yeah, these are zeros. Uh, let me go here and get rid of that filter, because now it's filtering on the other one we had. So if I say here, filter equals one, I don't know if I've got any examples like this, Yes, I do. So these are all lowercase characters, you can see. And if I said here that I want edit formula, or I'll actually do it, I'll get rid of the filter here. If I want capital A to capital Z, now it's going to give me only ones with capital alpha letters, if I have any. Yes, I do. And if I want any kind of alpha letter, then I can say capital A to small z, because in the filing, the Unicode filing, capital is before lowercase. And, oh, but I should do A to Z here. Good thing I caught myself. Oops, edit formula. Capital A to lowercase Z. It's going to give me a one. Oh, but I didn't filter by it yet. I'm still filtering by the old one. So let me get rid of this filter and make a filter on this new one. And now they all have any kind of alpha character. It might be capital, it might be lowercase, or it might be a combination. Let me see if anything popped in the chat. Can you please show us the filter again? I'm not sure when that came in, um, but I'll continue to do filters so we'll see them. Um, let's look at more examples here of regular expressions, because those are, those are pretty basic. Now we can also say, for example, it starts with a number and ends with a letter. And again, uh, we're not going to get into the details of how a regular expression is built. Uh, you can you see this document. It's in the link that I sent. And as you see here, it's got an actual example going through on how the whole thing is done. 
But let's look at this one here. So I'm going to put one in now. Like this. Let's make that larger. Okay, so this one is saying, give me a one. If it starts with numbers, then has letters to the end. The dollar is the end. The, the carrot, this is called a carrot, is, a, is the beginning. So from the beginning numbers to the end letters in the primary identifier. And let's say now, we put that in here. And I'm not going to do any filtering yet, but it should give me a one. These are all zero. They don't start with um, numbers and end with letters. Let's filter by a one now. And they all start with numbers and end with letters. 22A, just scrolling through, 180, starts with 184, 1804, ends in JP. Starts with 2525, ends in S. Uh, I think we get the point there. There's several examples in this document. Uh, and then you see here in the document how to go about doing it. Before I stop for questions, very related to that, the next one in the itinerary is here, regular expression examples. Someone wrote a blog, a developer's network blog. It happens to be I wrote this blog. Um, and it says, very important here, note that if you copy paste here, make sure the quotation marks transfer correct correctly. Sometimes, depending on Windows and all kinds of stuff, when you copy and paste, the quotation marks or the apostrophes get ruined and it doesn't work. It gives error messages. Uh, so there's all kinds of, all kinds of examples here. Um, this one says, for example, if there is at least one number in the string, uh, oh no, get field, which is all alphabetical. That's what we did. This will return one if the string is all alphabetic, zero if there's at least one number in the string. Uh, here's a nice one. Let's take this one. This is on the physical item details public note. So this one, get all fields let me make this larger in case you can't read it from there it says get all fields of the public note which have the string dvd in any position it must be uppercase so let's let's take this with us and let's go to the public note so that's in the physical item details we'll say create analysis physical item details And let's get here the barcode, in case you want to go to the item later. Let's get the title. And let's get anything. I say anything because if I come here and I say edit formula and I paste it, it's giving me whatever's here. So this is saying, I'll make that much larger. Uh, I want anywhere from the beginning a DVD and control minus just so I can get out of here. And let's display that public note also. And I'll just say filter public note is not null. And let's go see what we got here. Okay, so these are all zero. If I filter that now by one, I hope I have an example here with a DVD. If not, I'll just change it to something I do have. Nope. Okay, let's get a example we've got. Oh, we'll look at ones we have and just change them accordingly. 
Well, that's a disk. Let's see if we got disk. If not, we're going to change it to whatever we want. The C means case sensitive. That means it has to be uppercase. And I forgot that. Okay, great. So now we're looking for the word disk. Oh, this one is lowercase. Okay. And there's the DVD we had. Oops, sorry, wrong icon. And here. Let's see if we got disk. Okay. I think this is what I said about the quotation marks. Let's go back here. Sorry, all these here. Okay. I'm going to get the DVD one and we'll just change it ourselves. Okay, we'll get rid of the filter. And let's find something that exists here. Let's look for um, anything with the word missing, because I see a couple of them have the word missing. So let's say we want here. Instead of DVD, missing. And let's say, okay, there we go. So now I'll say anything that's not zero will have the word missing. Let's go back. Filter is not equal to, is not in, zero. And these should all have the word missing. First three pages missing, issue missing, page missing, missing, missing. So we're able to get, uh, this is dealing with the positions of where it is. Because uh, it's also possible to say exactly where it is. Our main point is it's not zero. Uh, so all of these have the word missing somewhere in it. And let me go back to that DVD one. I think edit formula. I'm going to make this DVD again. And I'm going to filter by that. Filter is not equal to zero. Okay, I, I don't have examples like that. We saw that the one with missing works, the one with DVD doesn't. Okay, so like I did here, that I was able to take one that existed and I simply changed the text, you can also do it. Uh, in your institutions, you don't need to know how to write the whole uh, regular expression. You can just take the text and change it like I did. Okay, now we have all the public notes with the word missing. Let me see if any more questions came in. I don't see any other questions. We have exactly a half hour left. Oh, there we go. Did you get missing, missing, et cetera, or only missing? I got only lowercase. And the reason I got only lowercase is because someone asked this question here. Somebody asked this. And I got only lowercase. And the reason I got only lowercase is because I searched for lowercase. And I say C here, which I'm, I'm not a regular expression um, expert myself. 
but that means case sensitive. And I think I mentioned that in here, um, the C means case sensitive. Yeah, the C in the last parameter of the parentheses means case sensitive. Um, here, the I means case not sensitive. So if I were to change mine from C to I, and also make the filter on that now, is not equal to zero. So now I'll have both, if there are cases like that. Yeah, here's, here's one with a capital M now that I didn't have before. Okay, uh, by the way, you can see those numbers missing is starting at position one. This is a seven and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's starting at position seven. Here it's starting at position 15. That's what these numbers are. Okay, so then you could say if you only want it at the beginning, there's all kinds of ways to do that though. Um, okay, let's um, move on. So back to the itinerary, and we might start skipping parts of the itinerary so we cover the most important parts. Where's the itinerary? So many tabs, so little time. Here we are. Let's use this multiple filters because this one's important. Multiple filters in one column. Um, let's talk about a use case first. Did I download that? Yes, I did. Multiple filters on one column. So it might be, for example, okay, this is a good case. Let's say, let me explain it before we read it. Um, what we often say, look at it outside, then we'll look at it inside. So looking at it outside, let's say, for example, that I want to get all of the transaction payments for one year and all of the transaction payments for another year for fines and fees or for overdue fines. So I need to filter by the transaction type or whatever field it is. And I also need to, to filter by the payment year or whatever field that is. I can't filter the whole report by 2019 and 2020 because I want one column with just 2019 and one column with just 2020. Or I might want to compare uh, fines and fee transactions and card renewal transactions. So on one column, I want to do multiple filters. Okay, that's the outside. Now if we look at it inside. Someone says, I'm trying to make a report comparing the amount of fines and fees we took from patrons in 2020 as compared to 2019 with four different columns. Overdue fine, lost item replacement fee for 2019, and then same for 2020. Let's just jump right in and see how we do it. You can all read this document on your own, which goes step by step. It's even got a high level answer if someone's in a rush, and then it's got a detailed answer for those who want to go in deep. So let's go in now. So let's say I want to, let's do exactly what it states here. We want to compare. What's going on here? I want to close that. Okay. We want to compare. It's actually a nice uh, example. The overdue fines and the lost item replacement fees for 2019 with 2020. So let's go in. I'm going to use a different environment this time. Okay. Let's jump into analytics. And... Did I jump into analytics? Let's do a little search here. Wake up the system. Oh, I'm in. Create analysis. And let's go to the fines and fees. Okay, she's working. 
There we go. So let's get the the transaction transaction amount. Now, I'm going to do it four times. Now, the problem here, or the, the issue that we want to overcome, is if I filter the whole report by payment year 2019 and 2020, and then I filter by the type is overdue and lost item replacement fee, the whole report will have it. So I can do it on one specific field. For example, I'm going to take this transaction amount here. By the way, what I'm doing now, you can only do on measures. The measures we said in the first session are those which are yellow, and it's a number. So I'll say Edit Formula, and now I'm going to click this filter here. Inside the Edit Formula, I'm doing a filter. So now I'll filter, and now I'll say I want transaction date year 2019. Transaction year, I'm double clicking, is equal to 2019. So this I will call transaction amount 2019. And then I'll take this one, edit formula. I'm clicking the filter on the bottom. Last time when we did the examples here in the edit formula, we clicked the function. Now we're clicking the filter. The name of our session today is filters and functions. <coughs> so now I'm going to click the filter here. And again, I'll go to transaction date and take the transaction date year. And now I'll say is equal to 2020. And you can see what it did. It says, I'll make that bigger. It says, filter the fines and fees transaction using this equals 2020. Eventually, if you play around long enough, you'll know how to type the whole function, the whole filter. But even if you do, it's always safest to use the built-in method. It does it for you. So now we'll say transaction amount 2020. And OK. So now I have transaction amount 2019, transaction amount 2020. Those others are the whole transaction amount, because I didn't touch them. So now. The transaction amount for 2019 was 45446 and for 2020 it was 44322 A little lower in 2020 than 2019. And then this is just the overall one that we didn't even touch. But now we want to do like it says here and compare 2019 that overdue fine with 2020 overdue fine and 2019 lost item replacement fee with 2020 lost item replacement fee. So we need four columns, two for 2019, two for 2020. And each one will have one for overdue fines and one for lost item replacement fees. So let's get this and this to also have 2019, 2020. Instead of doing the whole filter thing, we could just copy this edit formula. I'll copy that. And here, I'll paste it. So this is for 2019. And this will be for 2020. OK, so now we have four fields. Two of them are for 2019. Two of them are for 2020. Let's even order them a little different here. Now, we want to make one of these 2019. Let me save this in case something happens. 
Okay, save as. I'll leave that in the My Folders, and I'll say 2019 versus 2020 fees. Okay. So now, we'll just do another filter on the filter. So this is 2019 edit formula. So just like we did before, we clicked filter, we'll click filter again, filter. And now we want the transaction type to be overdue or whatever it was. I forgot already what it was, but we'll just choose anything. So we want the fine fee type. And we'll say, let's get the transaction type. Oh, no, we don't want the transaction type. We want the regular type. Sorry about that. Edit formula, filter, and we'll get the fine fee type. Here. So this one will be... Lost item replacement fee. So you can see it automatically did the whole thing. It has the regular original one, and then it added another field using the fine fees transaction. Fine fee type equals lost item replacement fee. And I'll call that 2019 lost item replacement fee. I can copy this whole one for 2020 and just change the year. So here, I'll take this 2020. I'll change this to 2020. And I'll just put this right here. So now I've got the 2020 fine fee, lost item replacement fee, 2019 lost item replacement fee. Let's go take a look. And here we are. We'll put them next to each other. Fairly similar amounts. Now we'll do the transaction amounts for overdues, 2019-2020. Once again, we're going to filter the filter. Edit formula, we already have here what we filtered by 2019. Now we'll filter the trans fine fee transaction, and we'll go again to the to the fine fee type. And now we'll say overdue. And I'll just put here overdue fine. I'll do that on 2020. I won't copy paste anything. I'll do it from scratch. Edit formula again. I have the filtered one here. I'm going to filter on it again. Clicking filter. And we'll go to the transaction type. Fine fee type, excuse me. Again, we'll choose overdue fine. And we'll call it overdue fine. You see again, it has the original one, and then it has the additional filter. So now we have the transaction type for overdue fine and for lost item replacement fee. And we can compare them. Let's even look at this as a pivot table. So there'll be one on top of the other. Not part of our regularly scheduled program but let's make our report look nice so i'm going to go into pivot table i'm making a pivot table so this is the pivot table i'll get rid of the regular table and now i'll edit it and put the measures can you see my hands moving put the measure down there in the value over here 
So we'll go to the edit view, drag the measure down to the left. We'll see what I mean in a minute. Or hopefully in less than a minute, in a few seconds, you'll see what I mean. There we go. So let's take this measure label and drag it right here for the rows. Great, done. So now we can see them right next to each other. We got lost item replacement fees went down from 2019 to 2020. Overdue fines went way down. Might be due to the corona, which started around March 2020. Um, okay, so that's double filtering or even single filtering on a field. Again, we couldn't do it on the level of the whole report because we wanted to compare in one report separate filters. Okay, let me see if there's any questions or comments on that. Okay, I don't see any questions or comments. Everyone's still with me? Just someone answer me and say, yes, we see you. We hear you. We're still with you. Anybody? All good, you can still hear and see you. All right, great. Thanks a lot. Okay, other people are answering me as well. Let me see who we've got on here. How many people we got on here today? Oh, 47 people. Very nice. Very nice. And like I said before, it looks like many returnees from previous sessions. Okay, let's go on with our regularly scheduled program. Um, okay. Let's go. Regularly scheduled program. And... Too many things open. Look at that. There we are. Okay. Um, our count. Yeah, our count. Our count's a good one. We're going to do these two here. How to add a running um, row count. So you have a bunch of rows in a report, and you want each one to have a number. And then at another time, you want to know the maximum amount of, number of rows. How many rows are in the report? Let's do that. Uh, I'm not even going to open the Word documents. Um, you've got them here. We have 11 minutes. Uh, let's just jump right in. I know when I attend a lecture, I don't like people to read their PowerPoints and documents to me. I say, I can do that on my own. Show me. So let's do that. So let's say, um, let's take this report here and change it around a bit. Uh, so this is all items with a, let's save it, all items, save as, all items with the word missing in the public note. Okay. Now, maybe we're sharing this with our colleague. And we're working on it because we want to know, oh, all of these are missing something. What's going on here? And we want to share with our colleague and say, oh, instead of saying the whole barcode or the title, say, like, um, what about row five? What about row seven? So we can have it all ready without needing to export to Excel and have the, the number there, et cetera. So we can put in any field, any field we want. I'm going to take the first field that appears. And edit formula. By the way, we can do this from a function too, come to think about it. But the function is our count. That means row count. And if you do one, it starts with one and adds one every time. Let's see what we mean. All I did was our count. And now we've got the rows. I'll put that at the beginning. And there's only 10 here. Let's let's get something a little larger. Let's say this instead of this. I'll say public note. Um, filter is not null. Okay. 
Uh, so now we'll have a lot more. Now, the total amount of rows here is 98. And if we want to know how many rows are in here and put a message in the report, this report contains blank rows. So for that, we can get the max. Let's use a function on that, because if I didn't know that the way to do this is to say max and then put it in parentheses, that's how you do it. I could take this and again, do a function. You can play around with these functions, by the way. There's a lot of cool stuff here. Uh, and I'll just take the max. It gives the maximum value. So I have all of my rows. Max is going to give me the maximum. I could also get the average, but I don't see a use case for that. But I, uh, uh, as far as rows go, I could get uh, average number of overdue days in the fulfillment, for example. We'll save that for another day when we have more than eight minutes left. So now I've got the max. So now they're all 98, but we don't want to make it like that. We want to have it say something nice on the top. There are 98 rows here. There's a couple of ways to do it. One way, I'm going to move this to the beginning, and you'll see why soon. It's in the first place. So one way, we showed a narrative in one of our previous sessions. A narrative is a way to write any text and have it appear in the report, and it can take another field and display it. And that's what we're going to do now. So we'll add a narrative to take that max row count. So I'm, going to, I'm clicking here, which is a new view. And the view we're going to choose is called a narrative. And it's located here under the other views and then narrative. So now you'll see on the bottom, there's a narrative. Right here. This is the narrative. I'm going to click the little pencil here to edit it. Let's first move it up. I'm going to drag it up to the top. I'll put it right here. Okay, so now I'm going to click the pencil. And the way it works is I can type any text. And if I put a at sign in the column, ours was in column one, it gives me, <clears throat> it says 98. And it gives me a bunch of rows because it does it once for every row in the table. But if I say rows to display one here, now it does it only once, but I don't want this funny text. I'll say number of rows in table. Boom. So now it's number of rows in table, 98 done. And now I have here number of rows in table, 98 done. I don't need to display it here. It's enough that I display it here. So here I can say max R count column properties, and in the column format, hide it. So I'm hiding it from the display, but it's still showing here in the narrative, but not in the columns because I did hide. Now if here, just to show, if here, instead of one, I had put two, it'll show me the barcode because that's the second one in the column. So it's showing me 00052 because that's the barcode. And we can also make it look all different kinds of ways. I'll put this back to one. We can do this also in HTML. And say, for example, I always like to put a space at the, at the beginning. So it's under the title a bit. We can align it left. You, see, you saw it was center, div align equals left. And we might want to make it a little bigger and say font size equals four. And we might want to say uh, color equals red. And that should cover us. And then we'll close the font. We'll close the div. And if I didn't make any mistakes, we're good. Done. 
great. So now when someone opens the report, they see how many rows we have, and it's right there on top. And it's automatically going to change, of course. When there will be another row, uh, the number will change. Let's see if there's any questions or comments on the R count. No questions or comments on the R count. Okay, let's go on. I think we can squeeze in another topic from our itinerary. By the way, even though we're not showing everything on the itinerary, we're showing the most popular one that people are asking about all the time. So, okay, so we did the R count. Case. All right, let's do a very quick case. Case is we can change the text of something. For example, let's take all of my users, all of my user groups. I'm going to go through this one a little quicker than normal. If I say create analysis, or better yet, I'll stay here, and I'll put the library name. Um... Well, let's get, okay, library name. Now, let's say I want to group them together. Anything that's the main library, I'll leave the main library. Anything that's um, not the main library, I want to say other. Okay, so I'm going to have main library and I'll have other library. Because I want to group them into two sections here, two types. So we'll come to the criteria, take the library name, edit formula, and function. I'm clicking the function again. And this time we'll go to the expressions. And there's two ways to do it. I'm going to use the first one, case switch. So how does it work? It says case, it gives you the field. And I'll say when main library, then I'll leave it main library. Or I'll just call it main. So we have something different. And I'll say the same thing for education. When education library, then education, else, other. I'm going to take this with me because I want to do it again and show you. It already gives us the syntax. I'm clicking function, going to the expressions and clicking the case switch. So it already has the, the syntax, when whatever, then whatever, else whatever. And I did, when it's the main library, make it main, when it's the education library, make it education, else, call it other, and I'll call it library type. And, Now it's main, education, or other. Before I had music and art and all different kinds. Okay, that brings us to 9.30. Before we finish, we're, we're at the official end of the session. Are there any questions or comments from anybody? Nothing. Okay, so thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we'll be posting the recording of this and hope to see you next week for session seven. Have a nice day, everybody. Thanks a lot.